It's Ron Brown with Tech for Senior Chromebook purchase consideration for your new Chromebook. You know, it was about 10 years ago when I bought my first Chromebook. Prior to that, prior to leading up five years before that, Chromebooks were only sold to school districts and were not commercially available to the public, such as you should buy in Best Buy. I was fortunate enough to get one of the first Chromebooks made by Samsung that started my journey on Chromebooks. And Huey and I at Tech for Senior had a series called Learning Chromebooks. And we did a monthly show for three years, 36 editions. And I'll put the link and playlist down below. It's now October 2023. And the choice for Chromebooks has never been better. I have a Pixelbook that still is doing well. I'm so pleased to enjoy the Chrome operating system. Today, I wanted to make a video to help you with the difficult choice of what Chromebook should I buy? There is such a huge selection out there. And, and, and with Black Friday coming, with uh, Amazon Prime Day, Christmas, and all the great times we're going to have in the next few months, there's going to be some great deals on Chromebooks. So I wanted to make this video so I can give you some important points to look for when you're going to purchase your Chromebook. Now, it was just a stroke of luck that I decided to do the video in the first week of October because last week, everything changed and Google announced a new set of standards for Chromebooks. And I'm going to discuss that in this video. So let's look at this and see how I can help you. At Tech for Senior, we all volunteer our time. So we do appreciate that like and subscribe. It really does help the channel to continue making the great videos we do. I've put, I personally have made a lot of Chromebook videos and I'll put the link down below uh, so you're able to look at those. You might find some that are interest. I did produce one recently on the automatic update expiry date, which has changed a bit on Chromebooks. You may want to watch that video. It just was released last week. All right, so the first thing, uh, we should set a budget. And I'm going to set the budget for your Chromebook between three and $600 US. I think that's a good range for you. It's a pretty broad range, and you'll see why that's so important in a few minutes. So where do, where do you find Chromebooks? Well, you can certainly see them at Costco. Uh, Best Buy sells them. Uh, Walmart sells them. And of course, Amazon online. All these places have great selection on Chromebooks. One of the things I always recommend is that you actually physically have a look at the machine so you can look at how bright the screen is, have a look at the physical characteristics of it. Uh, this sometimes is difficult online. So if you are purchasing it, it might be not a bad idea to pop by Best Buy and actually have a look at some. Walmart um, has uh, a great selection online. Be careful, you always wanna buy it if it's only sold at Walmart. A lot of third-party sellers on that. I think this is a good time to mention as well. As I said earlier in the video, Chromebooks are sold to school districts. These are sold in big numbers and are often made specifically for those school districts. In other words, the specifications are for a, a grade four student might be a little bit different than what we would expect as, as per the screen resolution and so on and so forth. So you have to be very careful because what happens with these Chromebooks in school districts is they're usually leased and the companies, the lease companies take them back after three or four years, refurbish them. And you often find these online, uh, particularly on Amazon. And these are really not great machines because they're often, uh, the screen resolution's lower. The automatic update expiry date usually is chewed up by three or four years. So it limits the functionality of these machines. So please be careful um, if you're looking at um, a Chromebook to purchase it online and it says it's refurbished, make sure that it's not one of the lease backs that's coming from the school district. The first thing you need to do when you are purchasing a Chromebook is to decide what you're going to use it for. Now, Chromebooks are made in two different ways. Most people will buy a Chromebook as a laptop. And that's great. It's, it's going to sit on your desk. But if you never move it, if it's going to sit there and just never move from your desk, do you really need a mobile laptop? That is why we also have Chrome boxes. Now, the Chrome box is the same concept. 
is a in a Windows PC like a NUC, and you see we've talked about those before, or the Apple Mini. So we have also we have a Chrome box. Now the advantage of a Chrome box is, and you'll see this in the diagram here, is that these are very small. These can be configured to any size you want with any processors. And the other thing is some of them even have no moving parts. They uh, fit in the palm of your hand and you can simply travel around with these and all you have to do is plug in a keyboard, a screen, whatever you want. It works just by plugging it in and you've got your computer. If you have a, a, your favorite keyboard around, plug it in. So these are very small and work well. So if you don't need the battery and you don't need a laptop, think about a Chromebox. The biggest selection of Chromeboxes, of course, is on Amazon. Now, the next thing you need to consider on your Chromebook is the screen. And this is by far what we're going to spend a lot of time today talking about. The screen is so important. And the first is what you need to do is consider size. Now, let's assume about 95% of you will be buying a a laptop, a Chromebook laptop. And so the sizes of the laptops, uh, screens will range anything from really tiny to eight inches to probably up to about 17 inches with the most common size being 14 or 15 inches. Now my advice is to stay away from the 17 inch uh, Chromebooks. There are some Chromebooks that are quite big. They do have large screens, but they're almost luggable. I think they're too big. And you see these, uh, there's actually one at Costco now for sale. Uh, I think that you should consider probably a 14 or 15 inch. Now, remember, you can plug any size of monitor into a Chromebook. Now, I've always talked about this with seniors, particularly size matters. And the bigger, the better. Uh, if you've had problems with your eyes, you have problems with vision, you can plug any size of monitor into a Chromebook. So uh, don't worry about buying a, a, a bigger screen on your, on your laptop because you can plug a 42 inch monitor into it and, and you don't have to worry about it. And, and you don't have to buy a great big machine to get that larger screen. Now let's talk about the resolution of your screen. I think an HD screen is perfectly adequate I don't think you should go and spend a whole bunch of money. There are some Chromebooks out there that have 4K screens. I think that by and large, that's just a waste of money. You're only going to be looking at a 14 inch uh, screen. HD will be more than adequate for you. Now, the next consideration on the screen is so important and that's a touch screen. So the first thing is, is that do you need a touch screen on your Chromebook? Well, we'll talk about that in a second. The other thing you consider is flipping it. Uh, now, as you know, in this diagram, you'll see a, a Chromebook can, can flip onto itself. And we call these either flips or 360 models. There's a lot of terminology you'll see, but that's where the Chromebook can turn over on top of itself and become a tablet. Now, <laughs> you're gonna say, well, why would I wanna do that? Well, one of the advantages of your Chromebook is, is when you get your new Chromebook and you open it up and turn it on, you're going to find a little button in there called the Play Store. Yes, you've heard of that from your phone. Yes, your cellular phone. All those great apps that you use on your cellular phone are all going to be available to run on your Chromebook. And you're going to get them at the same place. You're going to go to the Play Store and you can download and run all your favorite apps on your Chromebook. I'm always amazed when I watch people and how proficient they are at the thumb thing. And you see little thumbs flying like crazy and people running all these apps on their, on their phones. It's really amazing how people have adapted to the touchy feely things on phones. So let's think about this for a second. If you're going to use those apps and you're going to use them on a Chromebook, do you want to use them with a keyboard? It's so important to consider that because you'll be much happier if when you open the screen up and turn it over and it's in tablet mode and you can continue using it like a big phone, right? You don't have to spend two or $3,000 on a foldable phone. 
you've got a great screen now that you can use uh, to take notes or however you're going to do. And it works and with the touchy-feely thing because it's a touch screen. So I think it is so important, depending on the type of application you're going to use your Chromebook for, if you think that's something you're going to do, for sure you want to get a touch screen. But if you do get a touch screen, you need to get it so it flips and it opens up onto itself and then into a tablet mode. So that's uh, that's really important and I think a big purchase consideration of your device. How much RAM should you get in your new Chromebook? For those of you who are using your Chromebook for special situations, such as if you are a gamer, or suppose you're a very heavy user and maybe even using your Chromebook for some video editing or even maybe running Linux. Well, if you have specific applications that you want to run, you know what the specifications are. For all the other people that are going to purchase a Chromebook, you're probably going to have either four gigabits or eight gigabits of RAM. Now remember that the Chrome operating system is just an itty bitty little operating system. In fact, there's two copies on your Chromebook. There's a primary copy and a secondary copy. And it's always the secondary copy that gets updated, so you never get bothered. So unlike Windows, RAM is really not that important. The engineers that design these Chromebooks really figure that out. Now, I would encourage you to look at reviews on Chromebooks before you buy them. And Chrome Unboxed, and I'll put the link down below, uh, is an excellent website that does reviews of Chromebooks. And Robbie Payne reviews most of the new Chromebooks that come out. And you want to look at some reviews, and you'll find that a lot of times there are only 4 gigabits of RAM, and it's a great machine. So you don't have to be concerned like you are in Windows. Now, you will find that if you have a touchscreen and a higher-end model, you'll probably find it with 8 gigabits of RAM. <laughs> so how big a hard drive should you get in your Chromebook? Well, it's important for you to know that Chromebooks, since their very inception, have only had solid state drives. There's no such thing as a spinning drive in a Chromebook. So you don't have to worry about that. They're, they're all fast hard drives. Uh, again, unlike Windows, which is a huge operating system, and Chrome OS being such an itty bitty little thing, you don't need much hard drive space on your Chromebook. Most of Chromebooks work through Google Drive, and in fact, you'll be storing your files in the cloud. But there are a lot of options for you. And of course, if you have, again, specific requirements and you need more space, then sure, look at a Chromebook with a larger hard drive. Now, if you are concerned about the size of the hard drive on your Chromebook, look for one that has an SD card that you can put in. Most of them will have SD card slots, and you're amazed that you can buy one terabyte, as you see in the diagram here. Uh, this was just uh, on Amazon. This is a one terabyte SD card for $122. So you could just pop that into your Chromebook, and you now have a one terabyte hard drive in your Chromebook. Now, if you are a current Chromebook owner or considering purchasing a Chromebook, you will need to know the next bit of information. This is so important and really is a major announcement from Google regarding Chromebooks. And this occurred the last week in September of 2023. And that is the designation of Chromebook Plus. Now, what's Chromebook Plus? Uh, as you can see behind me, all the manufacturers got together with Google and decided to create a minimum standard that they could label Chromebook Plus as that standard. Now, you probably, if you come from the PC world, you've probably heard of i3, i5, i7, and i9. Those are Intel designations for sort of what how fast machines go. Chromebooks, since their popularity now, there are so many makes and models and processors it's hard for you really to compare one to the other. So Google decided to come up with a standard. And in order to get the Chromebook Plus designation, you have to have the standards that I'm going to discuss in a minute. 
Um, now, if you do have a current Chromebook and they do meet the Chromebook Plus standard, then they will be designated as Chromebook Plus. So it'll be easy when you go to the store and you're looking and you think, yeah, that's exactly what I need. And you can look across all models and just pick out the Chromebook Plus because it will have the following standards. And I'll tell you that in just a second. There's also something that Google has said they're going to do. I'm not sure what it's going to, I'm not sure how it's going to work, but they're going to be releasing some added software to run in the Chrome OS for, um, for Chromebook Pluses. And I'm just, more to come on that in the future. But this is so important because I'm sure right now before Black Friday, the manufacturers are furiously relabeling all their packages and Chromebooks so that they can get this Chromebook Plus designation. So uh, to get the Chromebook Plus designation, you'll have to have a 12th generation Intel Core i3 or a Ryzen 7 CPU. You'll need eight gigabits of memory. You'll need 128 gigabits of local SSD storage. You'll need a 920 by 1080 IPS display, and you'll need a 1080p webcam with temporal noise reduction. Those are the features that you must have in a Chromebook before it will get a Chromebook Plus designation. Now this designation will come on the box and be labeled so you'll easily be able to see it. You'll be, um, at, Chromebooks will um, undoubtedly be uh, wherever they're sold will be advertised with the Chromebook Plus label. So you're going to see this come out very quickly and you're going to wonder what's that all about because there will be some models that are probably fine. They'll be Chromebooks for you to use, but they won't have those set of standards. Well, it's Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. If you've enjoyed this video, please click that like and subscribe. I know you're going to enjoy your new Chromebook. They are a great machine and I certainly enjoy using mine. Till we see you again, have a great day.